last video, I introduced you to the Declaration of North America, which as I mentioned is an extremely important topic that curiously, not enough people are talking about. I saw that many of you were left with unanswered questions. Here, I hope to answer a lot of those questions by pointing to past events we can prove so even those of you who were too afraid to believe that something like this could be true, you can connect the dots for yourselves. There's so much evidence that I will try to summarize, but I encourage you to look into more details of the things that have been developing over at least the last 50 years that I will mention here. I will also note that there is no way that Congress is unaware as this regionalizing of the world and one world government has always been the goal. They need to be made aware that we the people are aware that the Uniparty has been silent on this. It is one of the one ways forward, but there are other methods I will get into later in the video. The Declaration of North America document, DNA, specifically speaks to multiple documents and organizations you should be researching. The WHO and their Crisis Communication Manual, the UN and their Intergovernmental Conference, the WEF, NAFTA, the OECD, the 2005 IHR, the United States-Mexico Declaration, the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration, Agenda 21, and the 2016 UN Global Migration Compact, to name a few. Most of these share multiple commonalities to the DNA document. They detail shared responsibilities and a comprehensive approach to migration, along with a responsibility for providing resources, including healthcare to migrants, on a global scale. The Declaration of North America also takes all of the applicable UN conventions that are already in place and memorializes it. This is their Declaration of Independence, a declaration of a new territory, and can be interpreted that as of January 10th, those borders are open and blended. A new territory of North America or North American Union. Those who were around for or have witnessed the formation of the European Union will find this very familiar. But let's tackle one of the many instances that I mentioned before. The homogenization of laws has already happened. Many have tried to stop it unsuccessfully. I will point you to the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is the tax and fiscal arm of the United Nations. Here, member countries have already harmonized medical codes, chemical codes, and law code as it relates to taxation. The OECD has a superior government already in place. They determine which of their representatives is the competent authority at any given moment. So, for example, during the COVID crisis, the OECD determined that the Administer of Health was the competent authority in our nation. As you can see, a one-world government, in theory, already exists in terms of decision and lawmaking. Another example is the information matrix and sharing amongst members via the OECD. Their common reporting standards has defined financial institutions as any person or body that holds money for others and has set an obligation that they must register both locally and with the OECD to disclose every account holder and transaction to them. Which essentially means that the OECD, who maintains this giant information matrix, has real-time awareness of every asset traced back to every living human being on this planet right now. Not to mention that all member nations grant the OECD the authority to manage their tax and fiscal policies, which as the DNA document reads, includes us. The premise of these unions and what is written in DNA is to eliminate any benefits and or discriminations between the entities within the union, hence open borders and law and decision making, including the authority of the WHO to take over decisions during a public health crisis. Many have asked, how does Biden have the authority to do this? You may recall that Joe Biden, after campaigning on ending the COVID crisis, has continued to extend the national emergency every 90 days under the false pretense of a continuing public health crisis. Through the 2005 International Health Regulations, IHR, our country made commitments that during a declared pandemic, public health law enforcement, corrections, and judiciary is essentially combined and all one in the same. Does the president have the authority to continue to declare a blanket national emergency? Does this act suspend our constitutional rights? Does Congress have the power of enforcement under a national emergency? Do they have the power to stop the president from doing whatever he wants under a national emergency? There is also debate as to whether Article 3 courts still even have jurisdiction under this national emergency. 
50 U.S.C. Section 1601, emergency powers of the president, in layman's terms, allows the president the power to do things that he wants to, which in theory could include giving away the country. Some have asked, what happens now to the sovereignty of each of the individual states in the United States? I will point you to Article 10 and recent declarations by Ron DeSantis in Florida, who's taken steps since the release of the DNA to declare the sovereignty of his state. Other states must begin to follow suit and declare the same. Lack of action will mean they too will choose to follow along with this union. We the people must hold our individual states accountable to this. Questions for you to consider that may help you to arrive at the understanding necessary to see the big picture. Under international law, is a country still a country when it no longer has borders? When a foreign occupier takes over substantial function of your government, does the government continue to exist? What functions have we lost in the United States? What role does a country like China play in our government? What if a president unhindered by Congress were to give up our sovereignty? Who has the power to stop all of this? From my view, it starts with the National Emergency Declaration. Is this National Emergency Extension under false pretenses and fraudulent? Who is the only entity with the jurisdiction to make that determination? Are the people in charge of that entity willing to make the right choice for what is right for the future of we the people? I do fully expect that there will be more declarations coming. Therefore, it is important to keep our eyes open to this and what is happening around us. Dive deeper into these topics, raise awareness, continue to ask yourselves the questions posed in both videos. Whether you are in law enforcement, in the military, or a civilian, just remember that every day we collectively have a choice whether to work toward a better future. If we choose to continue to ignore it, in the future, we may find ourselves apologizing to our children for our inaction. But I truly have faith that there is more good in the world than they would have you believe. Let's show them. Thanks for listening.